China's exports to South America have risen as fast as its exports to its neighbors in Southeast Asia. Uh, that's been something of a stealth development. Uh, it started with, uh, uh, with telecom, with broadband. Huawei was the advance guard of China, uh, building broadband from Mexico to Argentina. Uh, they made uh, an enormous effort to cooperate with governments, offer them cheap terms, and lock these countries in to uh, Huawei technology. Um, uh, I was in uh, China as an investment bank, sorry, in Mexico as an investment banker uh, with uh, the chief technology officer of Huawei uh, in 2014-2015. And they were pitching the Mexican government in 2017. They built um, a 4G network in Mexico on government contract with some help from Nokia. This was transformative. Uh, when I was, uh, when we did the meetings in 2014, we'd take taxis to go from meeting to meeting, and I would use my roaming broadband to use Waze to tell the driver where to go because Mexican taxi drivers couldn't afford broadband. It was too expensive. After Huawei got through, the cost of broadband dropped by 75%. And by 2020, I think, Mexico City was the number two user of Waze in the world. So China's initial role building broadband as a buyer of raw materials uh, was, uh, uh, was transformative. The second wave has been building factories. And Mexico, of course, has been the biggest beneficiary. Donald Trump was formulating about this, Mexican e that Chinese-made EVs manufactured in Mexico were going to swamp the United States and create what he called a bloodbath for the U.S. auto industry. So he proposed uh, very high tariffs on imports of Chinese-made EVs from Mexico. But Mexico, uh, like Vietnam, India, Indonesia, Brazil, many other countries, has been the recipient of an enormous amount of Chinese investment. The Chinese have built factories and extended their supply chains to a dozen other countries, and those countries are exporting to the U.S. We import less from China directly than we did in 2019, but we import more from Chinese supply chains hmm. indirectly. Hmm. So Latin America, particularly Mexico, has been a launch a way for China to get round American restrictions, get its grip into Latin American economies, build first the infrastructure and then the factories, uh, and become a major source of employment and economic growth to the point that it's very hard to extract them. For all we might complain about it, exactly what are we going to tell the Peruvians? We'll build a port for them. Yeah. So uh, China also has a bottomless appetite for raw materials and for soybeans. Uh, so Latin American exports to China uh, are an important factor in this also. China may end up being a bigger presence in Latin America than the United States. And the Monroe Doctrine will be buried somewhere on a moonless night without a funeral. Sorry, what is that? The, the Monroe Doctrine. Can you expand <clears throat> for me? The Monroe Doctrine says that other <clears throat> foreign powers should not have any major role in the Western Hemisphere, stated by Secretary of State uh, James Monroe in the 1820s. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, China may end up <clears throat> simply steamrolling over that, and there won't be a whole lot that we can say. Biggest problem we have in the United States is when Huawei comes in <clears throat> and offers to build telecommunications infrastructure, we don't have a competing product. Yeah. Uh, Cisco does a little bit of this, but by and large, there's no American company that does this. You've got a couple of Scandinavians, uh, Nokia and Ericsson. Then you've got Samsung that does a bit of this. But uh, the Chinese have, um, last I checked, about uh, 42, 43 percent of the world infrastructure market. Uh, that's Huawei and ZTE. 
and they're very good at looping in uh, global south governments and hooking them into making them long term dependent on Chinese infrastructure. Once you put the stuff in, it's very hard and expensive to replace it. But when you look at the progress China's made on the continent of South America, I mean, Peru has effectively said, uh, you know, the U.S. has warned them about doing deals like this with China. And Peru has essentially responded saying, well, we'll bring your wallet down here, right? Because we need infrastructure and Chinese, Chinese banks are funding it right now. So now we have a deep water port on the Pacific Ocean. The continent's never had one before. It was funded by China, but we have it now, right? Um, Uruguay now has a free trade agreement with China after asking for one and not getting it from the United States. Um, Honduras has recently cut ties with Taiwan in the hopes of increasing trade with China. Now, these might seem like small developments on the margin, um, but collectively, I don't know that they are. What, what do you think? Well, Honduras has 30 million people, Peru uh, a little bit more. Brazil has 330 million people. Mexico is, what, 130, 140 million people? Between Mexico and Brazil, that's basically the Latin American continent. That's half the okay. population. Yeah, good point. So uh, China's progress in both those countries has been enormous, uh, uh, not just in infrastructure, but as I, but as I said, in uh uh, building manufacturing capacity. Uh, it's very hard for, for me to imagine a Mexican or Brazilian government coming in and telling the Chinese to get lost and shutting down a lot of factories and losing a lot of jobs. And although friend shoring, so-called, looks like it succeeded, we're importing a great deal more from Mexico, more from Mexico now than we import from China. A lot of that is simply white labeling of Chinese goods or the assembly of Chinese components in Mexico for resale to the United States. So not only have we become more dependent on Chinese goods, but we've made the intermediary countries more dependent on China. And that's a major increase of China's relative power. And again, China hasn't had to deploy a single soldier to Latin America to um, uh, to advance this. It's all been done with infrastructure. 